Hey y'all. Hey. My name is Brando. Uh, um, yeah, cool. I'm gonna do some poems. I feel like them. Um, I have a t-shirt that says God is a cop on it. Um, and I wish I had it right now because it would be appropriate for this poem. I mean, I do, but I don't want to get out of the car. But, you know, no offense to, you know, atheists or religious people whose gods aren't cops. Also don't like cops, but, you know, in case there are any atheists that love the police here, I'm not sorry. So, yeah. It's called Engines Run on Sin. I hope y'all like it. Word is, if you're running, not from acquaintances, but from strangers. When your license plate is a bullseye, and your name a canine unit whistle, and the distance between you and some kind of safety is many hours to kill. Drive faster than the road signs tell you to. Everybody knows that speed limits for old people and fugitives, so unless you're both, break it at the same pace as everyone else. Because everybody's a criminal, it's just a matter of degree. And if you're acting like you're not one, then you're one with something to hide. Everybody's convict material for the shit that they've done, but some of us get to hang on to our street clothes for a while. What some might call a repeat offender, I call somebody who's been watched long enough by professionals that look for slip-ups like prospectors panning for gold. What some might call a law-abiding citizen, I call somebody with better blinds. There's no more secure line of work than living off the misdeeds of others, especially when your list of don'ts grows with every passing business day. And if you look close enough in anybody's basement or closet or trunk, you'll find something that you can't forgive. The only question is how long you'll be at it before moving on to more tried and true hunting grounds. We act like pretty cathedrals are the only relics left from the days that cardinals eat banquets off of silver plates paid for with the indulgence fees and get out of hell bribes or surf on surf crime. Like our own roads and fountains and fireworks displays were paid for in part by the traffic tickets and the wage garnishments of the Unruly and astray, like the made America tag on the back of your shirt wasn't somebody else's force could work, doled out by men that look like priests in buildings that look like temples, and served in places with penitents in the name. The church, at least, was ready to believe in the possibility of somebody living 33 years without breaking a single rule in their motel cabinet-sized book. But the bishops of law are not so forgiving. Their Bibles are a whole lot heavier and aren't done being written yet. Some people look for an end to crime by putting their faith in those who'd be out of work if it was finished. Others learn the art of pious, of loyal, of wasn't me, of what seems to be the matter, officer, of guilty or honor, of whatever it takes, not to wind up decoration for some cell block or mortuary slab for no other crime for be than being human. But those who zoom to the top, machine that run on sin will not ditch their ride just because everyone decides to behave. After all the places that it's taken them so far, why the fuck would they walk like the rest of us? When killers and predators can't be found, they'll find beggars and hustlers and red tape ignorers, create a hundred new laws, then wonder why they wind up with a hundred thousand new criminals. Blame it on the family, the TV, not enough beatings or art in school, the serpent, the wickedness of man, anything but their own thirsty tank that runs on human fuel. You cannot talk an engine run on sin and despairing you, you cannot guilt it with a sad story it already knows damn well is the story of a job well done. We were born under blackmail, so the creatures that feast on our indiscretion will eat well for as long as we both live. There is no negotiating with a force that is hungry and counts you as prey, and there is no such thing as safety for as long as it survives. Yeah. And quick PSA, if you like what you hear, make yes. a noise while he's doing it. Yes, so he yes, knows yes, you yes, like yes. it. Yeah. I mean, and it's if you don't like what, what I'm saying, by all means, yeah, say shit. Or make no Well, I'd rather confrontation than just, uh, fuck it, I'm leaving. No, just, yeah, one makes me feel alive, the other makes me feel sad. Um, cool. Uh, so I've been learning how to drive. I spent years never wanting to. Terrified that a second's misjudgment could introduce me to people that I'd never know otherwise in the wrong kind of way. The empty seat at the table is much mine as the one who's missing. So instead, my relationship with cars have been high-speed obstacles to dodge and badly planned crossings, rush hour audiences for messages of cloth when a stage won't cut it, and a perfect symbol for what humanity has become from the side of the busy highway. Watching the endless stampede go by like I'm not there, waiting for a car without flashing red and blue lights to take interest in me. A one in a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, to take me where I already know that it's going. Just thirty more miles. But I got tired of asking other people for distance without even a right foot to offer in return. And I never wanted to get to the point where that foot could save a friend or a stranger, and I didn't know how. So I talked myself into getting my permit before I could talk myself out of it. Now I drive the careful kind of reckless, or maybe the other way around, or maybe that's just how it feels, inside the world's deadliest weapon that I still 
forget how to turn off half the time. I spend every drive thinking of catastrophe, asking at every crossing that looks like a screech honk bang in the making, who'd have to pay for new windshields or teeth or restitution, because there are so many ways to break or get broken with a flick of a wrist, and wherever there's wreckage, there's got to be somebody stuck at the bill, and it's not always the one who hurts the least, it's the one who broke the most rules along the way. The sides of the road. Oh, god damn it, that's totally wrong. That's the wrong time. Um, it's the one who broke the most rules along the way. The Colorado Driver's Manual has a section on pets and wildlife and what to do when they cross your path. It says nobody wants to hit an animal, but most of the time you have no other choice. Dogs and cats and squirrels are too small to cause any real damage. But there's an art to hitting deer the right way at the least cost to your vehicle. Either way, it tells you. Do not try to avoid them. You risk more by trying to save them. You have the right of way. Roll on. I know no better metaphor for modern society than a busy highway, a collection of individuals that mean you no harm, transforming together into a force far more terrifying than all of its pieces, that would kill you for walking across it, or breaking ranks once you've entered, a tag team firing squad where all the participants swear their weapon was loaded with blanks until being called in front of a line of gunmen, all swearing the exact same thing. The sides of the road are lined with the dead of every species, including our own, but you cause more pain and trouble by trying to do something different than you do by just moving forward in a straight line. There's got to be a a certain amount of carnage you're okay with creating to take the fastest route from point A to point B, and you'll never make it anywhere if you pull over to check on everything you see bleeding on the side of the highway. What? Uh, so on the side of those last two poems I did, FCDs, I have books, if y'all are interested, check them out. Those last two ones I did are, well actually they're in a little book I have called Fuck You, You Don't Know Me. It's like, uh, kind of, pay what you can. I mean, they're all pay what you can, but that one's pay what you can, and zero is totally cool instead of, like, let's talk and it's probably cool. Um, but I, they are also going to be on an album that will probably come out in the next week with my, uh, also, like, kind of electronic music potentially hip-hop without rhymes, if you want to look at it that way, kind of dance, goth, uh, uh, I don't know, like, fun times music about horribly depressing things, so. Um, we're called non-state actors, so. And brandochemtrails.bandcamp.com is my, like, online music presence, so if you check that in, like, a week, you can definitely probably hear it. It's the thing I'm involved in that I'm the happiest with as far as, uh, you know, my words, but enough talking, I'm going to do a poem, are y'all ready for a poem? Yeah. Is that cool? Alright, cool. Uh, this poem is a persona piece from the perspective of a part of the country. It is a message from the West Coast to all points east. I know that I'm not perfect. The only thing saintly about me is the names of some of my towns, but I am still so much better than I'll take credit for Starbucks if you'll take credit for Walmart. I'll take credit for the SWAT team if you'll take credit for the cavalry and clan. I'll take credit for all those movies with explosions if you'll take credit for all those explosions. Till then, quit dragging me into your drama. I didn't kill Dr. King. Wall Street's on your side of the Rockies and so is DC. Zimmerman was one of yours and even my own killer cops are just following rules written long before any part of me had an English name. I don't know what gets into them in LA and Oakland and Seattle and Anaheim. Don't know why they riot so much better here than everywhere else. I blame Secondhand smoke, smog, seasonal affective disorder, it's gotta be something that I can fix with a few rec centers and parks, cause if only my troubled youths had more places to run around in circles till their anger subsides, they might not act out in fire the way that they do. But I am tired of getting blamed for your shit. Those ships full of white men had nothing to do with me. It was before my time. I would have turned them away at the coastline if they made it to me first, or at least made them take a diversity seminar before setting foot on my shores. I would have handled it so much better if the tables were turned. And those ships with Africans as luggage, that's not my problem either. I would have blown them back home if they made it to me first, but there was nothing I could do from right here. When those steamships full of Asians started coming my way, I wanted so bad not to become you. I tried to nip that one in the bud as soon as the railroads were finished, hoping that the smoke from burning China towns would make it across the Pacific as a warning that this was no promised land for them, but they didn't get the hint, so I had to turn them away. Now, vehicles cross my borders with humans stashed inside, they don't get the hint either. I want my conscience to shine nearly as cheaply clean as the floors, and sometimes the tiles gotta come first, but we don't want to make a habit out of this. That's why we turn them away. And when we killed our Indians, it was more mercy killing than anything else. It would be inhumane to let them go on like that, sandwiched between the fort and the sea. They pled and killed for keep what they have, but sometimes you can't take the word of the gravely wounded on whether they'd be best off put down. And you try telling people who just ventured across a continent to stop 50 miles short of the sunset. After all that walking or window seat buffalo hunting, there's no way we could let those beaches go to waste. It was as fast and painless as anything can be when there were bounties for grab and an ending in sight, and we left no wounded knee 
trail of tears, buzzwords for the history books to feel bad about, because with 250 years of practice on your belt, this shit is no longer worth writing down. I'll be the first to admit that I've made my mistakes, but none of them were original. I didn't write these rules, so don't hold it against me that they've treated me well. It's not my fault that I'm so good-looking, that I was perfect for a challenge and perfect for a prize. I can't be held liable for all the things that you did to try and impress me. You were the ocean where this started. I was the ocean that promised an ending. You were the bloody racetrack. I was the pure saltwater finish line. You can't blame the trophy for everything that goes wrong in a marathon. You can't blame the western sea for shining, for sparkling like a gold medal when the sun goes down. Alright, I'm gonna write, do a sad poem about martyrs. Um, somebody did a better poem at this thing, the Southern Fry Poetry Festival that I was just at, and that was really good, and this is uh, not as good, but I hope yeah, that's, you haven't heard it, so you don't know. Um, Alright, tonight, your name is too obscure to even make the phone book for lack of a landline to tie it to. It's the kind of name that the lawn would spend years trying to think up but can't. An easy name to forget or hide behind. You haven't heard it spoken, loving or excited for years, just said like the slam of a door. At court dates, at DHS offices, at old friends' front doors. You celebrate most of your birthdays alone. Your only presence, what the alleys give, you are only noticed when you get in the way. Tonight, as you look for a shadow to hide in, you are no one. But tomorrow, you will be more popular than you've ever been before. A man that looks like a lazy skinhead will blame you for everything that goes wrong for him from here on out. The glory he never got, the job that he never lost, or the job that he could have lost. Anyone who ever stood in a line with you in the snow will turn your size and casual comments into a story of how close they were to you. The anarchists that mocked you for believing in God, the Christians who wouldn't talk to you for breaking all his rules, the communists who ended their conversations with you when they saw that you didn't have the money for a paper, they will all talk about you like their hearts are lit fuses, and they won't lie. The mayor will speak your name as elegant as tax, like something he shouldn't be sorry about but is anyways, and slam poets will win thousands of dollars just for telling your story. Printing presses will be carved into the shape of the sound of your name, then slammed down time after time for wants to come, and your face will be pasted onto street poles to peel off the storms. People you've never met will lie in bed crying about you and how they wish they could have saved you. And people you've never met will shout the sound of your name by the thousands to bring up the rage, to give them strength. Glass will break for you, cops will bleed for you, banks will burn for you, the world might even shake for you, and your family will never love you more. But you will not be remembered for how you lived, you will be remembered for how you died. Died. You will not be mourned for what you've done. You will be mourned for what was done to you. But till the fuckers make a name for you, you are no one, all lowly and alive. Your name is just a name, like any other. And the world would rather have you as a martyr than a friend. Oh, shit. I can hide. Uh, I have not done Oh, it's in here, yes. Fuck yeah. I have not done this one in too long. And I've been meaning to, because god fucking damn it. And it's time for a revival. Because uh, now, yeah, it's always fun to, you know, tell people. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm so excited about this. Thank you for reminding me. Cool. Alright. This is another persona poem. This is a message from the U.S. government to those who once cried for peace and now cry for protection. You dumb motherfucker. I was beginning to think that every police bullet might be the one that convinced you guys I don't give a damn about human life. It was getting to the point where it wasn't even fun to drone some wrong time, wrong place schlubs into Kingdom Come anymore. Sure, it felt good to say fuck you to half the world using Troy Davis's body as a billboard, but after it was over, all I could do was wonder if I'd actually shattered something as precious as, or fragile is the word that I wrote precious in this book, as precious as fragile as your trust in me to keep you safe. But you dumbasses never learn. I've known for a while that you people don't like violence, and thank Gandhi for that. It's been a blast keeping ambulances filled past capacity from Manila to Fallujah, while most of the only people at home that have a problem with it see fighting back as meditating, fucking, and telling us to stop. So yeah, you fucks wouldn't have guns in the first place, but goddamn, it always amazes me how eager you are to have them taken away from other people. Lord knows, you sorry-ass clowns have gotta be sick of having your asses handed to you every time you pick a fight with me, so I understand wanting to play with the winning team for once, but come on. 
You know I'm not gonna throw those weapons away, right? I have the best collection your tax dollars can buy, and believe me, I don't keep that shit around to go hunting with. There's more than one kind of peace, you know. There's the peace that decided not to beat the shit out of somebody, and then there's the peace that comes when they've been beaten into total submission in graveyards. No damn well which kind I prefer. And for people that piss and moan so much about 1% of the population having who cares percent of the wealth, you seem alright with even less having all the real firepower. Oh, wait, I remember, you ought to be safe. I can't keep you safe, that's not even my job. The active word in gun control isn't gun if you know what I mean. Motherfucker, if you thought the drug trade was scary, wait till you made the black market arms trade. I've already picked the neighborhoods. I'm building prisons on top of to store all these new orange collar employees working for the true minimum wage. No but shit. we gotta keep guns away from dangerous criminals, right? You dumbasses think I'd pass a background check? My record is legion. Kidnapping, human trafficking, continent wide home invasions, bio war, possession and use of WMDs, armed robbery, rape, arson, drug trafficking, homicide, terrorism, homicide, terrorism, homicide, terrorism, but hey, at least we drive limos instead of pickups and don't use words like y'all. Look, I know, I'm teasing you. <laughs> but I think thanks are in order. Thank you for giving me more impunity than I already had. If Katrina was any preview of the things you can get away with doing to a disarmed population, then great things are on the horizon. When I film next, what you gonna do about it? Get yourselves arrested? It would be an honor to haul you in. Know that from here on out, when I give you anything, I'm not quaking in my boots. I'm saving myself a, he myself a headache. Know that everything you do, you do with my permission. But cheer up! You got to feel like you won for a change. And I, I found friends in the most unlikely places. For people that don't believe in guns. I never met a crowd so eager to shoot themselves in the foot. Another poem that's kind of about like why liberals are annoying and also probably a lot of people that are maybe friends even um, and how like a lot of times what people are fighting for I don't think actually may not actually get us any free or whatever, but also just kind of a rant about the state of the world in my mind and everything. This one's called Scourges and Proud, and I hope y'all like it. <clears throat> Seems like everybody's looking for answers about what great men would do with their foot on the pedal and their hands on the wheel. And the best thing about turning to corpses for tips is they're not around to contradict you. So the advice you get is always that other people should do the shit you want done but are afraid to do alone. And damn near everybody's hoping or praying for reinforcements to come around and turn this tainted world into their personal favor kind of clean and messy. And for those that use words like sensible and courtesy, the day they're waiting for is the one where everyone finally comes to their senses and realizes how wise they are. But for those of us that prefer exclamation points to citations, our help from the outside looks a lot like the worst thing that ever happened through the wrong set of eyes. You're rooting for Armageddon. You're rooting for global revolution. You're rooting for zombies. You're rooting for industrial collapse. At my lowest points, I put my money on my hopes on the volcano Beneath, ye blah, beneath Yellowstone Park to spit out what they've been holding in and cover this country in ash and lately most of my points have been low ones and we tell ourselves that we'd survive our own granted wishes but we probably wouldn't so we cheer on catastrophe with fingers crossed because we don't yet know how to be the scourge of our scourges because we aren't disaster enough on our own we find each other through symbols and catchphrases that seem to say we hate the shit we're in for similar reasons but I'm not so sure you're drawn up verbal utopias and the picture's so vivid I can practically see myself sleeping through the ten hour long Meetings. But if the things we say are so obviously true, then why aren't our hometowns ruins or Big Rock Candy Mountain yet? You talk about hating yourself like it's the most radical thing you could do. Well, if that's the case, this place is on the brink of insurrection. Seems like everyone's either ashamed of the bullets they've caught or the bullets they've dodged, and the only ones immune from this guilt are the ones that are truly guilty. You put revolt on the back burner, purity on the front, but I ain't waiting till I'm sinless to start casting stones. And if your biggest problem with most people is that we're too greedy, I beg to differ. I say we're not greedy enough. What some might call rat race. I call a race for scraps, and as soon as you get to the finish line, you watch it get yanked back. You want to scramble for rations. It's more just and fair and kind. I got riches on the mind that are more than buy-offs and bribes, so I won't hate on anybody for hunting for treasure, just doing it uncreatively. Because no billfold full of presidential portraits, all drawn the same, could be worth a life in tailored suits playing god-awful boring boardroom games, and no pocket-sized pictures of the guy that gave us bifocals could be worth betraying a friend, or trading in a life I love in this or any other world you throw my way, and maybe getting this life on rig will take all the friends you can find, but when all you want is everything, that's one thing that never runs out of supply. Eh, fuck all the guilt and all the Nile. I'm greedy for more than paper and trying to be more shameless than the ones who taught us shame, and maybe we can be the dead ones, the still unborn, finally listen to when we tell them to look to themselves. The reinforcements never seem to come. Disaster to our disasters, catastrophe to our catastrophes, scourges and proud.
write another poem, I'm definitely going to fuck up. Um, so yeah. uh, I'm probably going to get through one or two tonight without fucking them up. But um, I, I don't even know about that because I'm probably just going to do it three more. That's cool with people. Anybody bored? I mean, Chill, I, no. Okay. I mean, it's kind of an awkward thing to ask, but if people are bored, let me know. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, this is a, a poem, another sad poem, kind of, about libraries. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm from Denver, and Denver has lots of issues with, like, homelessness and, like, war on the homeless and everything. And I think it's worse there than a lot of places, but it's everywhere, so it's not really, like, a Denver thing or whatever that's irritating to have most people look at my hometown as, like, ooh, legal weed! Everything's perfect, but fuck that shit. So, but this is a poem for any city, really. Um, unless your city is a place in your imagination without problems. So, um, <laughs> when the friendly but dead voice on the intercom finishes its countdown to zero, says with the firm sad guilt of breakups, layoffs, and denied bail, the library is now closed. And the hundreds of all-day residents make their way out, no books in hand. And the guards search the premises with flashlights to make sure nobody's getting the same free shelter as all the paperbacks, magazines, and DVDs. As the automatic doors become palace gates, and the church bells ring in the hour on a city changed by night into something different. A monster. A forbidden zone. An enemy. A maze of padlocks. A trail of dance floors that won't have you and parties you're not invited to. Making their way past the benches that have held more stories than the buildings there in front of, as if all written by the same genius that never runs out of priceless dialogue, unbelievable situations, and unreplaceable characters, but can't seem to write a happy ending. They scatter across town in search of the best pickings of shadow and crevice, playing hide and seek from the cold, the predators that TV cops hunt for, that hunt for, you go. Um, and the real life officers that cruise the city looking for signs of a need to pounce on. The night is a gamble and the odds are good. But good odds don't take you too far when you have to gamble every single night. You can't pick a place too warm, too comfortable, too full of other people who recognize solidarity as another way of saying fucked in all the same ways. You can't pick a place that makes too much sense. These days it's all about what no one can see. It's hiding behind power boxes. It's the lots where the grass grows tallest. It's crawls through parking garages till you reach a spot that the cameras can't see. It's the planes beyond firing ranges with gunshots for a wake-up call. And when the bars let out, all the drunks with addresses will point to every brown papered bag to say, this is what the bums chose, that they shiver on their way to sealed cars and heated homes, and a bottle's never been the only thing they had to keep warm. And the party people blame the drugs, and a town they move to to do drugs, and the ones who give orders for a living say they want to help. They serve up soup one night a year after tearing down kitchens that served round the clock. They've got all kinds of answers, except for ones that don't include them, and they're willing to do anything but take your word. Talk about politics, like it's a choir that needs your voice instead of the bars across the bus benches, the uh, the compactors behind the grocery stores, the ugly noises playing on loop beneath the warmest grates in town so that if sleep comes, it comes chaperoned by nightmares, all the obstacles standing between you and your needs, you and your wants, and a city full of fields and canned goods, city full of matches and two-by-fours and empty buildings, city full of, uh, city full of, yeah, that's actually right, city full of, no, city full of nails and two-by-fours and empty buildings, city full of matches and gasoline, oil, barrels and blankets, of knives and bullets, of friends, and the resourcefulness that only comes to those who need it most, a city full of ways to get by, that are none of the business of those who only know the library is a place to check out books for free, who've never sat in the one place for town, where in town where sitting for free isn't some kind of theft, watching the countdown to night and war, that don't know shit about the threat of a world that gets summoned with the words, the library is now closed. and maybe some of the other ones too, because some people who hate country music like this poem too. It's not the music of the South. It's not the music of the West. It's called country for a reason, and that's where you'll hear it the most. The parts on every state map where no place's name is in bold. There are parts of Oklahoma where it's the radio's only alternative to sermons, but I don't really mind, because unless you count the public radio station playing Mississippi blues for an hour to people that have never had it, country is the only option on any dial willing to own up to things like not being able to find a job or having a heart. And in order for one city to count as an escape from another one, it has to be at least a tank of gas away. And if you can find me a truck stop that doesn't play country music, then you found me a tourist trap. So that means that everyone who ever ran from somebody that gave a shit about them for good or for evil had to hear country at least a little bit, and that song was almost definitely sad. 
I know how it goes. That song becomes a song for you, or the ones you may be hurting, or the world that hurts us all. I wonder how many flings have ended with a country song on the radio in the middle of the night, turning back home to problems you can predict, or ending that journey in a truck stop bathroom when there's no home to go back to. Maybe that's why so many people who take off running, aim for big cities on the coast 50 miles from tractors, where everyone says they listen to all kinds of music but country, and you don't have to keep on listening to everything that you left behind. I'm gonna do two more poems. One's a yelling about politics poem, and one's a yelling about ah poem. So, um, yeah, cool. I'm gonna drink a little coffee real quick. I can, I guess. Is it your coffee though? Yes, it is. Excellent. Cool. Here. All right, getting getting prepared. Y'all, how are y'all doing? Good. Good. Y'all enjoyed the other stuff you heard? Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, I was going to load up some poems that were related to what Mo was talking about on here, but I forgot because P.T. Burnham set flew on by, and yeah, so that just didn't happen, so I apologize, but I have poems that were relevant, and you'll never hear them. Unless they buy your books in No, but they're not in a book. They're on my phone and will be in a book eventually. Oh, well, we'll just come back next yeah. time yeah. you're in the area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're not that good. They're just relevant, you know, for what that's worth. But, um, but yeah, I mean, they'll be in a book that if y'all are here in a year or something, I'll probably have that book and you can be like, relevant shit. Anyways. <laughs> Banter! Hey, it's fun! Alright, cool. Uh, this was inspired by a Holocaust museum I saw in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, one, two, three, four. Today, I saw a sprinkler behind glass. Thing glass that would easily break beneath a fist wrapped in a t-shirt. And I've got two. A shower head that thousands of shaven-handed humans spent their last prayers in Romani or Hebrew to seek gone. And I was sitting in one room, Holocaust Museum, guarded only by aging pacifists. So I could have made those prayers come true just 43 million minutes too late for it to make a difference. And in Georgia states, in Florida nursing homes, men that burn black skin as an effigy for the problems in their marriage set out their retirement and the satisfaction that they really did walk. Because for every Emmett Till getting some kind of justice, 40 years too late, there are 1,000 names I will never know, whose killers are more vulnerable than ever to the kind of justice most judges go their whole careers without giving out, and cops today do the same thing, to punishment of paid leave and sensitivity classes, and I don't mean to say that we could punish them too, but we can, because successful slam poets make enough in one college gig to keep a family and a house their great-great-grandparents built, enough on tour to keep land in the hands of people who've lived there since before anyone ever said the word London, because the money in my pocket will make the difference between life and death if it was in somebody else's. Because money makes the difference between life and death every minute of every day. And queer leftists get close enough to foreign dictators that want to kill them to slit their throats, but instead give them hugs and speaking dates. Because the enemy of my enemy is still my fucking enemy most of the time. And Americans go to Holocaust museums and ask if this could happen here, proving why it can, while the smallest minority in this country is those whose land it is to begin with. And when I look at a map, the stages of genocide, Arizona's already made it halfway. But I don't think it's fair to compare our leaders to Hitler when Stalin's a much better comparison. Three presidents from two families kept all food and medicine out of the country for 12 years and two million funerals to teach their leaders who that oil really belongs to. Now their pensions are equal to their kill counts, and their names are the names of airports and charities, and if any one of them met their Nuremberg news, it'd be called a national tragedy, and men who turned food into fuel for a career win prizes from those charities named after presidents whose job was also starvation. Their lives aren't hell yet. They are expected to be long. It is possible to be bored while committing genocide, feeling less hatred for your victims than you do for morning traffic. Holocaust doesn't mean hate, it means sacrifice, burnt offerings, so we all become Holocaust deniers for a second. With every candidate we vote for, every tax we pay, every gas tank we fill, every law we obey, the next best thing to smash in that sprinkler head in 1944 is to smash something like it today, because even Gwen Beck can call Harriet Tubman a hero. The dead are dead, and shrines aren't the only ways to mourn. The gone are gone, and there are no better monuments to them than to learn from them, to fight for the living, to treat the words never again as a promise instead of a fucking slogan, and make sure if more museums get built, there won't be any- blah, there won't be any- Props. Props. Excellent. There won't be any props to fit in the displays. No German shower heads, no Rwanda machetes, no police cruisers, no ice prisons, no new Fuhrer skulls, because they will all have been too damaged to be recognized. <laughs> I do. Fuck you, 
You Don't Know Me, which is the name of this next poem. Fuck You, You Don't Know Me, part two, or Too Big to Fit. It will be my last one. But hit me up, um, get my books if you like them. Um, otherwise, just have a conversation um, if you want to. Thanks, y'all, for showing up and everything. Thank you to the Wingnut for making this happen. Um, and he has no a free book, too, if you have no reason yeah. not to look at the books or talk to him. If and it really won't be awkward if you're too broke, because I'm always too broke, so, yeah. Sorry, did I interrupt you? But I didn't. To you at least. Yeah, to me at least, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, fuck you, you don't know me part two, or too big to fit. Um, yeah, to me at least. No building looks as big on the outside as it does on the inside. You could call it a trick of geometry. Try to explain it and just leave me more confused, but I don't buy it for a second. I know that this life, this world, is packed too big to fit with things packed too big to fit. Whatever it is they've got packed inside of them, and I cannot try to understand it. And I cannot hope to change it, even if I could. I don't know if I'd want to, no matter how much unstorable hurt may come along for us all. How books smaller than pillows and lighter than bricks can change lives after a couple hours of staring. How a few bearded guys' answers to the madness that surrounded them could bring about centuries of free breakfast programs and artificial famines and millenniums of burning bodies, tools made to see how much pain can be fit in a nerve, and every once in a while, a person or two treating those in their lives a little bit better. How bottles of liquid and clouds of smoke can make a night seem to hold so much more and make impossible an unpronounceable word. How a few stray sentences and thoughts can do the same in ways you're more likely to remember the next day. How a highway can run on for 3,000 miles and still feel flimsier than a single one-pump town along the way. A single cabin half scorched down with yucca for its welcome mat. A single oil barrel fireside conversation beneath the overpass that you zoom over with your wheels none the wiser. A single light and silhouette from a single window and an hour that nobody has any business being awake. How the coast-to-coast -coast journey of two sleepless days can be made empty speck by the endless parade of lives that whiz by like old-school rhyming billboards saying, This is the way that people lose. This is the way that people win. This is the way that people lose, thinking they're about to win. This world only looks big if you don't think of everything crammed inside of it. I can honestly say, this planet doesn't look the big enough for the both of us. Take me, this tiny little giant container. I can mean so many things so hard and brutal at one time without cracking. How the scrappers inside me can fight like they do without busting out how this crowded place that I am could possibly store this melee, this battleground, this cast of thousands, this massive dogfight that feels so ready to escape and fill the land. They can't all possibly fit into this handful of inches and pounds, but here they all are anyways. My give a fuck and my DJF, my recklessness and my cowardice, my fear of doing what I want most, and my fear of never doing what I want most. My crazy, my say, my crazy, my say, my crazy, my sorrows that sing, sweet and full of promises, 15 teenagers in bands named after birds, and my sorrows that grind like rebar and buzz. Saw. My love, my hate, my love, my hate, my love, my hate, my love, the way this existence looks from the front seat to my skull. Something huge to the universe, that the universe didn't have edges, but something I still fold up too often in nothing but a graveyard waiting room. Here they all are. Every piece of me. Every resident of this heart, all deserving a home that no palace or mansion could possibly store. Don't know about you, but I'm too big to fit into this body. Don't know about you, but I'm too big to fit into this world. Yeah. Yeah! I didn't get anything wrong with that poem. I skipped it. <laughs> Y'all didn't know that until now, so. I was just kidding, actually. My fingers were crossed. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. Yeah. Whoa!